So I made that budget PC, and I decided to put it in the living room, but we have this little dog that'll run around. Yeah, look, and he loves to play. So, having an open test bench in the living room, not a great idea. You know, you get little, like, carrot toys stuck in the fans or whatever. Very bad. So, I ended up getting a whole new setup for it. Right here, a nice little case. And, because it's all nice and closed off, you won't have stuff hitting it and going in. Watch this. Ugh. So the goal I have with this PC is to be able to play whatever I want from the living room. Now I am going to be trying to use Steam Big Picture as my front end for this. There are a few different other options that I've tinkered with and that you may be more interested in using, but I am going to use Steam to do everything because I PC game a lot. You may be more interested in checking out something like uh, Big Box or RetroArch or Emulation Station or something like that. but. Uh, here, I'll, I'll just run through. I mean, you can tell I have quite a bit of stuff on Steam and I really want to be able to play this. And this PC is pretty good for playing PC games. So I'm going to do that. Now, I want everything to be mixed in together, though, in Big Picture. And we have the ability to do that. I can easily import the data for emulators and throw them in here. And I could even use RetroArch to do it if you wanted to or if I wanted to or whatever I'm not going to for this video that may be something I do in the future though but for now because there's there's things that RetroArch's really good obviously people like it quite a bit but I'm not incredibly familiar with it so I'm just going to be using individual emulators and I think there are certain emulators that don't really have cores that work that well with what I want to do, like Dolphin or like PS2, PS3, things like that. So I'm not really going to bother with that for now. And if you have no idea what RetroArch is, all this sounds really confusing to you. Don't even worry about it. We aren't even going to be using it. Uh, that's just me prefacing this saying, hey, I'm not going to be using this. Don't worry about that. But I am going to be using a nice little thing called Steam ROM Manager, which will make everything look all nice and pretty like that. And we'll be able to just pop right in and have everything good to go okay so what you're going to want to do is you're going to need rom files or just just game files they, they might not be a uh, rom they people use rom as like a general term this right here what i have is actually an iso for a gamecube game so i'm going to be showing you this tutorial could get blown out of proportion really quickly i'm just going to show you one game on one system and hopefully you can kind of piece together what you need to do just from this, okay? So I will go ahead and show you Steam ROM Manager. Now to download that, you're going to want to go to their GitHub. And if you want to run the portable one or like you don't want to manually install it, by all means do that. I just went ahead and downloaded the setup though and installed it. And now I have a nice little desktop icon. And here we are at the Steam ROM Manager. Okay, so welcome to the parser configuration. Okay, so what this is, is this is just going to help you configure how to pull data from your emulator and your ROM. Uh, again, I am hoping, I'm kind of going into this video assuming you have a little bit of knowledge of that. If not, that's something you're going to need to find out on your own because there's a bunch of different emulators and they work in different ways. This isn't necessarily a beginner tutorial unless you only want GameCube, in which case go get Dolphin and then just follow along with me. Otherwise, you're gonna need to learn a little bit. They have guides and I can certainly make more guides if we need more uh, in-depth specific tutorials. I can totally do that, but we are gonna just show off Dolphin for right now. So you're going to wanna go ahead and they actually have some presets lined out. So. This may be able to just get you where you need. And again, they have so much for RetroArch. If you're doing a bunch of the older systems, I probably recommend RetroArch unless you have something specific in mind that you really want to do. But I don't know anything about the Dolphin RetroArch, so I'm just going to use normal Dolphin. I know how to use that. That'll work really well. Now, parcel type. You're going to just keep it a glob. I don't honestly know much about that just just keep it a glob <laughs> this will work totally fine okay now you want to configure the name i'm just going to keep it at gamecube 
actually Nintendo GameCube, the Steam category. So this is automatically going to set up a way to organize things on Steam, which is really nice. And it's gonna be GameCube. I'm probably just gonna change the title to GameCube then too, if it's just gonna be there. Now, what we need for here is we're going to link up where the programs are for it to actually run everything. So for executable, it says path to dolphin. It wants to know where our dolphin's at, okay? So we'll just go ahead and I have mine in my game folder, retro, GameCube, games, dolphin, and here's my dolphin, we found him. All right, and then we want our ROMs directory. So this is just gonna be where I keep all of my dolphin games, which happens to be in my games folder. And actually, I just realized I've organized this in a, a very poor way. So we're actually gonna fix this before I regret it. So I have the emulator and games in two separate folders. I would definitely recommend doing that. So I'm just gonna relink this real quick. And now we need to tell it where Steam is. So to find this, you're probably just gonna have it on your local disk. Uh, even if you have other hard drives or stuff enabled, like I do, I always keep my Steam on my SSD, and all you have to do is just find the folder. You don't have to find any program, it just wants that info. Now the globs are the file extension types. So if you're making a custom one, this is already filled out for me, but I'll show you what to do if you're doing a custom one. So essentially what you wanna find is the type that this is, okay? So if you don't know what it is offhand, this is a .iso. So all we have to do is make sure that .iso is right here and it'll pull the data. So if you're doing any other system and it doesn't have a, a nice already configured thing, you would type in for your user glob, you would do .rom, like .rom, or you do uh, .bin for PlayStation, for example. PlayStation will normally use a, a bin file or a queue. So you'd probably do both or maybe just a queue actually. I don't know, it really just depends on how you have your files set up. Again, I'd probably look into your system a little bit before just, th or you could just jump right into it and then fix it as you go, you know, whatever's fine, but you're gonna need a little bit of information to get this working 100% is just what I'm trying to say. And that, like, we're already pretty much done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to save and then I'm going to test the parser, which is just going to go through everything for us. So right here, title, fuzzy title, final title. So it goes through and it reads and it makes sure that it has the titles correct. Sometimes you can type gibberish for the title and it'll pull together and see what it is. It'll also categorize it in the GameCube and image queries. So it went through and made shortcuts for everything. It downloaded an image for it to go into Steam and it categorized it for us. Okay, so if you ever wanna go back and mess with your GameCube settings, you can just click on here. I'll have it laid out for you. We saved it. And now, if you wanna preview everything before you actually go to Steam, make sure everything's right, or you can go ahead, you know, if it's not right, you can change it right here. You can go to preview and generate app list, and what it'll do is it'll just show you what it looks like, and here you go. Now, what you can do is you can go ahead and you can modify some of the images maybe if you want, if you'd rather have it look like this for example you know there's there's plenty of things to choose from and then once we get into steam or just in here you can add a custom image right there so you can go on the internet find your own and then add a local image and just pick it from here if you'd rather do that once you've configured everything to your liking you can go ahead and hit save list and it will go through and it'll make sure Steam will import this exactly how you want it. And then you want to actually open up Steam. Now, if you had it open during this, go ahead and close it and relaunch it. That way it'll refresh and collect all the data from the Steam ROM manager. And then you can just launch right into it. All right, so let's go to library. We'll go to installed and look at that Animal Crossing right there, ready to go. So we'll just go ahead and click on to it. And this should just launch Dolphin. Just like that. Now, the whole thing about me saying you kind of need to understand your emulators and what you're doing a little bit as, uh, well, you see Steam is running this on top or the rather the emulator is running on top of Steam. So Steam kind of has access over the game. 
but you still need to actually make changes in your emulator like you have to go and tell dolphin to put this game in full screen so it'll go into full screen and then if you don't want to play you can just exit out it's really nice